Hello friends, so this is our third video on neoplasia in which we are going to discuss about certain genes again. So the first one is your tumor suppressor gene. Okay, if there is loss of function in tumor suppressor gene, then that will lead to cancer as we have discussed. Clear? Now, there are there may be three types of uh, changes which can lead to cancer such as inactivating point mutation, okay, or deletion or epigenetic silencing by hypermethylation. This is all we have discussed in our previous videos. Now, the first gene we are going to discuss about is retinoblastoma gene. Clear? It is present on chromosome number 13 on long arm. Okay, and this is known as governor of genome. This retinoblastoma gene is known as governor of genome. Now, coming to the normally growing cell, then we will move for the cancer cell. So, normally in normally growing cells, growth factors come and it will activate cyclin and cyclin dependent kinases. Okay, and there will be growth. And growth inhibitors, that is CDK inhibitors, will come and inactivate cyclins and CDK, and then growth will be stopped. This is the normal phenomenon. Clear? Now, what is the role of RB gene? So, RB gene will make RB protein, retinoblastoma protein, and if retinoblastoma protein if is hypophosphorylated, then it, if hypophosphorylated, then it will be in active form and it will suppress growth because retinoblastoma gene is an example of tumor suppressor gene. So, it will suppress growth if it is in active form, and after hypophosphorylation, it is in active form. Now, if hyperphosphorylated, then it will be in inactive form and it will promote growth okay tumor suppressor gene so it is if it will be in inactive form then it will promote growth clear now this is a diagrammatic representation how rb protein is working here so this is rb protein okay and one transcription factor it is e2f is shown here okay now this e2f transcription factor will bind to this rb protein clear when when this rb protein is hypophosphorylated so active hypophosphorylated retinoblastoma with e, e2f in its pocket e2f is a transcription factor which will bind to rb when it is in active form when it will be in active form that is hypophosphorylated form so there will be no transcription of growth promoting genes because e2f is binded to rb protein which is an example of tumor suppressor gene which will not allow the functioning of e2f so there will be no growth now suppose if your rb protein will be in inactive form that is hyperphosphorylated form then edf ET, e2f will not bind to the pocket of the rb protein and it will lead to the transcription of growth protein genes and that will lead to the growth clear so this is the role of rb gene how rb gene is involved rb protein is involved in your cancer clear now moving to the next slide now in this growth inhibitors that is tgf beta Okay, it will stimulate CDK inhibitors and it will active inactivate cyclin D, CDK4, cyclin D, CDK6 or cyclin E and CDK2 all at G1S checkpoint. Okay, all these all will be inactivated at G1S checkpoint as we have discussed in our previous video. Now, this will lead to hypophosphorylated retinoblastoma protein. Okay, okay, its inhibition will lead to activation of RB and RB will held E2F and there will be no growth phenomenon. This is the normal process and if suppose it is rb will be inactive then there will be growth because there is no there is no one to hold e2f so this is the basic mechanism how growth inhibitors is leading to no growth promotion by stimulating cdk inhibitors that will cause activated form of rb and that is doing all this thing okay now growth factors come then it will bind to growth factor receptor then lead to activation of cyclines and cdks and its activation lead to hyperphosphorylation of rb so if growth inhibitor is coming then hypophosphorylation of rb is going on and if growth if uh, growth factors is coming these are the growth inhibitors and if growth factor which are needed for promoting growth is coming then it is leading to hyperphosphorylation of rb that is inactivation of rb and that will lead to e2f in free and that will promote your growth clear now loss of function in rb is seen in your cancer okay and loss of function maybe by mutation or deletion or there will be, be amplification in cdk4 and cyclin d that can also lead to cancer or loss of function in cdk inhibitor okay cdk n2a or pit 16 like this clear now we'll do the next slide now next point is viral oncoproteins can occupy the pocket in rb meant for e2f okay the pocket which is meant for e2f is occupied sometime by viral oncoproteins clear and if that position is occupied by something else then e2f cannot bind to that pocket then it can lead to release of e2f that will promote cancer so this is a mechanism how certain viral proteins promote cancer okay and one viral protein is e7 protein of hpm that is human papilloma virus clear so this is a basic now moving to the next gene next protein that is retinoblastoma 
ओके सॉरी वन टी टू पॉइंट फर्स्ट विल डिस्कस देन वी मूव फॉर नेक्स्ट ओके रेटनोप्लास्टोमा देर वी टू टाइप आइर इनहेटेड रेटनोप्लास्टोमा और एक वायर सो इन इनहेटेड और फेमिलियल इट इज ऑकिंग इन यंग एज इन बोथ हाइज एंड इंक्रीज रिस्क ऑफ अदर कैंसर दट इज मोस्ट कॉमन इज ऑस्टियोसार्कोमा बट स्पोरेडिक और एक्वायर्ड रेटनोप्लास्टोमा इज इन स्लाइटली इन ओल्डर एज एंड इन सिंगल आइज इन बॉल एंड नंबर एंड दे इज नो रिस्क इंक्रीज रिस्क ऑफ अदर फैक्टर्स ओके सो दिस रेटनोप्लास्टोमा इज एसोसिएटेड विथ आर बी प्रोटीन ओके नाउ मूविंग टू द नेक्स्ट स्लाइड नाउ All cancers are genetic, but familial cancers are caused due to mutation in the germ cell. Okay, here the earlier cells are involved, hence chances of other cancers are also increased. However, in case of sporadic, as we discussed, there is mutation in cells of a particular organ, so chances of other cancers are not high. Clear? Now, the next one is Nutson's two-hit hypothesis. We have discussed this in previous video also. If there will be dominant state, then that will lead to increased risk of cancer. But if it is in recessive state, then that is homozygous state, that that will cause cancer. Okay. This is genetic discussion, and this is the basis of Nutson two heat hypothesis. This is Nutson two heat hypothesis. Clear? Now moving to the next gene after retinoblastoma protein. The next one is your P53 gene. Clear? T53 gene will form T P53 protein. Okay? P53 protein will form, and this is this gene is present on 17 chromosome number. Now, this P53 gene is known as guardian of genome. Retinoblastoma was known as governor of the genome. This is known as guardian of the genome. Clear? And most common gene mutated in human cancers is P53 gene, and it is a transcriptional factor. This protein P53, 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 this protein is a transcriptional factor. Clear? Moving to the next slide. Now, in a normal cell, in a normal cell, we are talking about with uh, normally functioning P53. Suppose if P53 function is normal, okay? P53 is kept at kept non-functional by binding to MDM2. P normal cell with normal functioning P53, P53 is kept non-functional by binding to MDM2. Clear? Now in a damaged cell with normally functioning P53, suppose if uh, DNA damage uh, is occurring to the cell and that cell have normally functioning P53, then what will happen? So damage is sensed by ATM and ATR gene that will lead to down regulation of MDM2 means inhibition of MDM2 and that will lead to release of P53 and this P53 is a transcriptional factor, so it will cause two things. Either it will cause cell cycle arrest at G1S or G2M. Okay, and it will increase transcription of P21. That is a CDK inhibitor. Means it will try to cause cell cycle arrest by doing anything like this increase transcription of P P21, which is a CDK inhibitor. Clear. Now second method that it can also lead to DNA damage repair by increasing transcription of GADD45 gene. Clear. So in a damaged cell with normal fun normally functioning P53, P53 is try to stop the cell cycle because there is damage in DNA. Yeah, that damage is sensed by ATM and ATR genes. Clear. Now moving to the next slide. Now, if some if some much damage is too much, then it will lead to senescence. Okay. If so, damage is a way too much for letting the cells live. Then we it will activate pro protein gene that is vaccine and cell undergo evolution. So these are the four mechanism how P53 is working. Clear. Now, the next the last option is the cell is damaged but there is a loss of function of P53. So this is important from cancer point of view. Okay. If there is DNA damage but in that cell there is abnormal P53 means P53 is not functioning so P53 dependent genes are not activated okay so there will be no cycle arrest no repair no senescence no apoptosis and if these four are not occurring then it will lead to cancer damage cell multiply and it will lead to cancer clear now moving to the next so these are the two genes important okay in next video